And right now, it's time to talk a little CFB recruiting. God, Mike McCarthy's so fat. It's just so hard to, like, put your faith in someone who's that overweight. How do you demand perfection when you're that fat? You look uncomfortable, Mike. Anyway, congrats on Earl Thomas whenever he signs with you. Uh, right now, my pleasure to welcome Shay Dixon of Go247 at Shay Dixon on Twitter. Uh, did I lie? Is it at Shay Dixon? Two, it's at Shay Dixon on Twitter. Shady, what's up, bro? Oh, not a ton, man. How are you, T-Bob? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And if you're thinking that I should not be throwing stones about calling people fat, Shay, don't think that. That's very mean, okay? Um, I Shay, didn't think that. To, you, you put that on yourself. I didn't think that. A couple other big guys uh, in the news as LSU, a couple LSU targets. Uh, Mason Smith, who is maybe the premier, I mean, well, I, I think the premier Louisiana target defensive lineman, like exactly what LSU is looking for, has formed a huge friendship with Corey Foreman. The huge number one DN out of California. We've talked about this uh, in the past on the show. Uh, but both those guys, major LSU targets, they both took a visit this week in Shea. Where did they go? What did you hear about it? Yeah, they were both at Georgia this weekend. So <clears throat> Corey Foreman flew in, um, I guess, for the, the weekend and, and the earlier part of the week. And then uh, Mason Smith made his way up there. Amarius Mims, uh, who's a five-star offensive tackle. Um, uncommitted, but he's uh, a lot of people think that he's been uh, leaning towards uh, Georgia for a long time. He's a, a Peach State kid. So uh, Tolson, a couple of other guys had a running back commit. Georgia does, Lavassier Carroll. Um, they've got a kid, Xavier Sori, a linebacker uh, that they're after, LSU is as well. Um, and they brought all those guys uh, to campus this past weekend in Athens. But I guess I should say they, in parentheses, uh, would have to mean the kids because right now we're in, in an NCAA dead period. Yeah, The coaches are not allowed to have any sort of, um, not only obviously contact is, is the main thing that's limited. No face-to-face -face contact, but you can't have them on campus doing like an unofficial visit or an official visit type thing uh, because nobody in your staff can interact with them. So what we saw Georgia and Oklahoma do somewhat quietly, not so much on the OU's end, Georgia's was a bit of a surprise, but they had all those kids just invited them in to hang out around town. And uh, I'd imagine they probably hung out with some players or things like that. But um, it's an interesting move considered that since mid-March, they've not allowed any sort of on-campus visits for hmm. kids where you interact with a coach, where you get to see a practice. None of that's allowed. Um, but what we've seen Georgia and Oklahoma do is try to skirt around it by saying, well, look, the kids and their parents and, um, you know, and their coaches are putting this on. We don't know anything about it. They might be in town, but, wow. um, you know, we're not able to see them. Uh, no sweat off our back. Uh, I won't be surprised if um, whoever works in compliance in the NCAA this morning woke up and their email was ding, 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 with so all these other schools across the country saying, <laughs> uh, take a look at what these two did this week. Wait, so Georgia is trying to claim that, like, Kirby Smart never would have run into these guys over this weekend. Like, he, did, he just didn't talk to them. A hundred percent that they would claim that nobody on their staff did not even like a GA or any of that. It would wow. be a players could maybe hang out with them, but um, how they broke it down was the kids were all just in Athens hanging out together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I look at Athens is a fun town, but uh, something's a little fishy there. Uh, as far as Mims go, my guy Ray UGA says Mims is going to Georgia. So I guess I just have to believe him. Uh, That's your boy. Yeah. 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 What about a, hey, so uh, like, how concerned should LSU fans be, though? Because Mason Smith and Corey Foreman are both five stars, and for whatever reason, Kirby Smart in Georgia seems to be like a five-star magnet. Yeah, you tell me what's going on with that. I, I think that, I think that the thing moving forward. Look, I'm when you talk about five-star magnets, I think that all these kids certainly look at what each other are doing. I mean, we saw Caleb Williams with that at OU this weekend, Tristan Lee, who you guys met on the show at time, yeah. uh, was out there with his mom um, and brother and some other folks. And they, they had a couple of five stars in town. And then Georgia has this five-star weekend where guys like Corey Foreman and, and Mason Smith, I think is who you'd certainly say are, are sort of five-star magnets yes. and, and bringing other kids around. But when I'm at the end of the day, especially right now where these kids can't take, like Mason Smith had planned all off season to be at another school like every other weekend. He was committed to it. He wanted to experience the whole process. And 
none, none of that's happened. Now, granted, he went and hung out in Athens this weekend, but look, these guys are, I think LSU, for instance, look at the teams like LSU and Bama. We've heard nothing of them doing anything like this. I think that the Georgias and the Oklahomas are feeling the need to, to deliver with on-field results after doing so well in recruiting uh, for so long. So I think that's why we've seen them sort of turn up the heat in a non-traditional way on some of these kids. But uh, as I say, at the end of the day, when Mason Smith goes back to, to Thibodeau and he's at, you know, Terrebonne High and uh, playing around kids who would love to see him at LSU and certainly having a, a really great relationship with the LSU staff, I think a visit like this isn't much I would worry about. If if you were actually allowed to visit yeah. with yeah. What, the coaches and you watched a game and you saw them knock off the Gators and you and Corey Foreman went out in Athens all night, yeah. sure, maybe. But oh, yeah. in these times where really nothing's allowed and you're not watching a game, you can't even go to practice, let alone walk around the facilities. Um, and I would bet that they didn't. I would bet these kids weren't going through football ops at Georgia or any of that because it's so high profile that if they got busted off that, they'd be in a, a little bit of trouble. So Dude, story, I don't think this weekend is big enough to worry about, I guess is what I'm saying. The story's way weirder, though, than, than I even realized at the onset. Because I, I did I did think that it was a dead period. But, yeah, so they just showed up and then didn't see the facilities or the coaches or anything. Huh. Huh. Okay. Well, here, you, want the, you want the crazier one. Sooner Summit this weekend in Norman was put on by Caleb Williams, the five-star quarterback, and his father. And they invited all these five stars from around to, to go. And they basically, T-Bob did, and I guess by the book, at least some of this would be legal, they hosted an entire official visit weekend. They just didn't have coaches there. Wow. But they still had all the kids around each other. So they're going to top golf. They're going out to eat. Um, wow. They're walking around campus. And then, and, and some of these photos got deleted, and we'll see if it causes a little minor violation or whatever it might be, or it might not be an issue at all. Um, but they're in the stadium, you know, taking pictures and walking the field. And oh, I, saw Come on. Of, I mean, that's I a saw, visit. That's a visit. Like I straight saw, up. I saw, I saw my text blew up with a handful of, of people who coach at different schools that said, yeah, well, this, that ain't legal. That ain't legal. And then uh, the OU side, I saw a couple of people came out and said, well, Actually, the stadium is always open to the public. Um, we've never actually seen any of the public in the stadium hanging out, uh, but it just so happens to be, I guess, that these five stars all knew that it was open to the public and so open to the public, you can just walk around the field. That's and what I'm saying. To like take photos and go through the locker room and anything you'd want to do. They got to let, they got to let, like, they got to honor that now, right? Like, if you're a student on Oklahoma's campus today or just a regular person that lives by campus, just go walk in the stadium. They can't tell you anything. Security you know, guards, you're good to go. You know, if I was one of those like old school reporters like, from like the 30s or 40s or something, you know, with the typewriter and like the yeah, hat yeah. together and the media thing, I would drive to Norman right now and like do the, I'm going to go walk into the stadium and then I'll tell the story of if people can just walk into the stadium or not. The gumshoe journalism right there. Talking to Shay That's Dixon, right. 247 Sports, at Shay Dixon on Twitter. As you can see, my man is in the know. Real quick, because I don't think there's a lot to expound on here. Uh, Foreman, no senior year, obviously being in California. What are his plans like playing wise? Well, yeah, that's actually a really good question. So he's going to not, right. So California is not having football till the spring. And he's already said, look, I'm going to go to school this fall. I'm going to play if they have them in the all American bowl in January and announce my commitment. And then I'm going to turn around and be an early enrollee mm. uh, at a school. So that's all in place. Now, the good side of that might be is that everything he's doing right now, Corey Foreman at Centennial, where he goes to high school, is online courses. So if LSU does play football this fall, he can hop on a flight and get over and actually watch a game. Nice. You know, it, it's not like he has school all week that he's got to worry about in terms of actually being physically there. So he's not going to play a senior year of high school football. He'll never play another down of high school football. He may play in an All American Bowl, if, you know, like I said, if they have them in January. But regardless, that that next live game is going to be a college game. Um, but just think about the online courses for a kid like that will allow him to visit places. Um, look, regardless of LSU's playing or not, I'd expect that at some point before he decides Corey Foreman's making his way to Baton Rouge. Hey, let's put together an OTB five-star weekend and we'll bring all the guys. I'll bring all the guys down to Baton Rouge, right? They don't need to see any coaches or anything. I'll, I'll be their tour guide. The T-Bob tour guide. I'd, hey, we'll see who turns you at I was going to say, the they lit up with 
Kirby, you'll make Kirby Smart mad. I knew that. What a traitor. I mean, a, a GAC kid going to LSU yeah. and now right. touring the kids around right. campus. Georgia boy and Louisiana race, right? Something like that. No, it's actually the opposite. Whatever. Point being, uh, that's pretty shady. Get it, Shay? Dixon? I All do right. get it. I So, again, just for so, – so people get the whole point we're talking. In the dead period, you're, a, co- a college coach can only call a kid. That's it. Zoom or text or whatever. You're not ever allowed to see them in person. You can't go to their high school. They can't go to your college, which makes it all sort of fishy that they hung out at your college all weekend, but ne- they actually did never see you type thing. Uh, uh, uh. Interesting times. Man, recruiting never stops. Times. It's so crazy. Dude. Shay Dixon, follow him on Twitter. Thank you, Shady. Uh, man, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. All right.